Today's video is all about how to get rid of poa annua or annual meadow grass. Hello and welcome back to the Lawn Association channel. Um, I've got a few apologies to make at the beginning. Um, there'll be dogs and cats wandering everywhere. So as much as you may want to learn about poa, you always be a little bit distracted like me, uh, looking at very cute animals everywhere as well. So anyway, today's video, poa annua, annual meadow grass. It's a great talking point. We're into June at the moment, and normally we don't sort of, uh, well, we certainly never used to see annual meadow grass uh, much after sort of May and June time, but with the web, weather patterns changing a little bit, we tend to see it all year now. Um, I've seen it seeding in December, so uh, <clears throat> the norm is no longer the norm. So um, what is poa annua and what is annual meadow grass? Now, there's a lot of videos out there about annual meadow grass. Um, in fact, there is an incredibly high amount of people that don't really understand annual meadow grass. So the first thing to first sort of myth to get rid of um, that, that a lot of people will learn from is that there is a plant called annual meadow grass, but this plant will evolve into a perennial form. When you look at golf courses throughout certainly the UK and Europe and even into other parts of the world, they are consisting of mainly perennial poa annua. So when we look at poa annua, we tend to sort of think of it as a weed grass. Now, it's an opportunist grass. In fact, when you think about it, what, what grass does and what it's certainly done with annual meadow grass, the grass species has adapted itself. So when we get a little bare patch, one of the first things that can happen is that annual meadow grass can take over because the seeds will probably already be in your soil. So learning about annual meadow grass, the first important point, don't think of it as an annual problem. Uh, some of the best pieces of turf in the world are down to perennial annual meadow grass. I know it sounds very complicated like that, but it, when it becomes a perennial form, it becomes much darker green, uh, much finer leaf blade. So when people are seeing it, they're seeing it in lawns, especially uh, what we would call replacement lawns. So the, these people are um, scarifying to death their lawn every year and overseeding. You'll basically open up the canopy for annual meadow grass to pop in and germinate. Uh, personally, I think it's a fantastic grass. It's, um, it will give you grass cover. Uh, and it's something you should maintain. Now, when I ran uh, the very big golf course that, that I ran, um, Poa Annua was uh, very, very sort of important. Um, we were trying to maintain an annual meadow grass free golf course. Um, and you imagine doing that over 260 acres with uh, footfall, wear and tear and everything else. Uh, <clears throat> so the first thing that we did, and one of the really important things, is that we chose the right grass species to try and combat annual meadow grass from coming in. And the grass that we used is exactly the same one as I have on my lawn. It's a slightly different, um, hello, it's a slightly different uh, species of that grass, but again, it's called bent grass. This, the one that we used was called creeping bent grass because it crept much faster than some of the traditional uh, bent grasses we have. But the way that plant <coughs> grew, it gave us maximum density over the canopy to stop the germination of those weed seeds. Now, we did post or post on our Facebook uh, page, the Lawn Enthusiast Group, um, what some of the questions are that people want answered because annual meadow grass you'll get a million different answers uh, from a million different people uh, mainly from people that don't particularly understand it um, <clears throat> so we'll answer some of those as we go through uh, but obviously we'll, we may cover one or two of those in some of the things that I talk about at the same time so if you haven't uh, joined our enthusiast group do get over to Facebook and have a look because it's uh, it's all about continued education. You know, it's there to post questions. It's there to, to have debates as well. Um, but you'll be getting correct advice as opposed to uh, someone's uh, opinion. Um, 
Now, I've been uh, fortunate enough to, to have an enormous amount of um, interest in Anu Medegras, as I said, running uh, a golf course, especially a golf course that was hoping to keep annual meadow grass uh, out of its greens, tees and fairways, especially. So um, we've learned an enormous amount. Um, we've used lots and lots of different techniques. Uh, I used to have, a, it was a, I had a very, very large staff crew. So we used to have 24 men on a Monday morning, for example, going out ham weeding uh, across all the golf greens. Uh, which is a little bit extreme and certainly not done nowadays. But when you also look at annual meadow grass control now, uh, the football industry is a very interesting one. Now, the football industry <coughs> created um, a problem solving when it came to annual meadow grass. And it's one that some people take onto their lawns uh, with this sort of replacement ideology, which, which is purely, purely and simple up to any individual. It's a lot of work, I have to say. So what they did, uh, and they actually went back to a World Cup many years ago, and I, I'm old enough to remember, um, I'm not old enough to remember what the year was, but what happened was that the TV picked up lots of patches of annual meadow grass, and the pitch, it was in South America or somewhere like that, <clears throat> the pitch looked like a patchwork quilt. And what these were, were patches of annual meadow grass growing in a ryegrass dominant sward because it can, it has the opportunity. So what happened in the football industry, they came up with a, uh, an interesting system. At one point we were re-turfing football pitches every year, uh, which was very expensive and laborious and everything else. Um, and they decided to, and they still do this now, of course, they decided to rip the football pitch up at the end of the season, even though it looked pretty much like it did at the beginning of the season, but it probably did start to have annual meadow grass coming in. So they literally call, well, it's called corroing. So they basically scarify incredibly deeply, take the thatch and the grass away and then re lay a brand new pitch everywhere. That's their way of controlling power because there are no chemicals. Now I did have the experience during my golf time to actually even trial, believe it or not, glyphosate uh, on creeping bent grass lawns, uh, creeping bent grass, uh, bent grass uh, turf, I beg your pardon, uh, at incredibly low rates. And the idea was to try and stress out all the grass species, but because power was a very shallow, weak rooting plant, that would die, and then the remaining grass would eventually come back. In fact, there were even golf course superintendents uh, who made the mistakes of doing that as well. It was quite scientific, it was quite high tech, and you, you really did fly by the seat of your pants if you were trying that but that was one of the ways. In fact, in America, I know for a fact for at least probably 25 years plus, we have actually had glyphosate resistant grasses. Uh, they're out there, they're genetically modified, but you can spray glyphosate and take out a new medigra. However, they've never been allowed to be used anywhere at all, including um, golf courses, even just on their greens. So annual meadow grass control comes in many, many different forms. And I think the key to that is the word control, is how do we control it? How do we keep it at bay? Uh, and how I can set up my lawn to at least give it the best chance to control the demon. It's not a demon, it's a grass the demon that is annual meadow grass. Now, when it comes to giving your lawn the best chance uh, in which to combat annual meadow grass uh, ingression, it's to choose one of the best grass species. And uh, although it's a drum that we keep banging on, um, if, if people really want to look at annual meadow grass or even perennial, uh, meadow grass um, encroachment into their lawns they've got to look at how it's coming into their lawn and the little bit of lawn you can see down here um, this is bent grass again and you can see the stolons here growing very well this is not a manicured lawn it's just a piece of grass 
but what you can see is no pan power annual at all because the grass canopy is is blocking out any seeds that will be probably underneath that surface they will definitely be there but the way that stolons grow and spread as you can see here they are stopping the germination of anything like that so there's no annual meadow grass in here and there's no annual meadow grass control done the plant is doing it for you that's why this plant is so superior to to many others so let's go and have a look at a couple of other species to give us an idea of exactly what some of the problems may be so when it comes to um, the idea the idea of how to combat annual meadow grass starting with the right grass species is is quite an important thing if if annual meadow grass is that much of a problem too now what we've got down here uh, before the wind blows it away um, here we've got a little bit of annual meadow grass which I just found in my patio and everyone knows the little seed heads here millions of little seeds in here and uh, one of these has blown in and obviously germinated in my um, gaps in the concrete in my patio. But this is why this is one of the world's most prolific grasses. You know, it's an opportunist grass. Um, so when we look at ways to stop it coming in, we've got to think, where does this have the chance to establish? And of course, when we scarify lawns, uh, we take them especially bare, back to bare earth as well. These little seeds will be in your seed bank, in your, what we call the seed bank, which is in your soil. Won't necessarily always be in the thatch, but they can be in the thatch and survive as well. But that's why it survives so well. Um, it's got an incredibly shallow root, root depth, as you see, but that's one of the ways in which people try uh, and starve it out, dry it out, etc. So that's the annual meadow grass plant itself, but when it comes to renovating a lawn, uh, choosing the right grass species, as we just saw on the little patch of bent grass over there, um, it can give you the best opportunity um, in establishing a lawn that's gonna have a lot less in there than, uh, than you would like. Um, here we've got a fescue plant. You know, if anybody hasn't seen a fescue plant before, this shows you the sort of toughness of it, but it also shows you a lot more a lot more blades of grass as well. So there's a lot more density to this plant as well, uh, which again can be useful in uh, keeping a protective canopy away from that sort of uh, open seed bed as well that, that will allow uh, power annua to germinate. So again, you can see the big, big difference in that. If we come over to here, um, this is your ryegrass plant. And you can see... Um, you know the difference in in growth levels looking just looking at those three like that um, this this plant um, as you can see grows very very vertically very quickly but it doesn't have any plant density it relies on how many plants that you've uh, established in your lawn now of course if you're like one of the uh, some of the YouTubers out there at the moment, they've just about finished. We're in mid-June almost now, uh, very close to my birthday, just in case anyone wants to know. Um, but we're in mid-June, and some of their lawns are coming up really nice. I have to say they look very pretty and everything else, but um, we are in June. Um, <laughs> very odd. Um, if you haven't seen our video, we did a video on February the 1st. And certainly um, by February, the end of February and beyond, the lawn's been great. Um, so ryegrass is a, I can understand why people use them. Um, it's quite good for businesses because they have to, if they use this um, every year, um, it gives them a, you know, a nice bit of income. Um, but it's a not particularly great sustainable plant because of that density, certainly with annual meadow grass. You know, it, you might have lots and lots, but over time and over winter, this will thin out if you've got a ryegrass dominant sward. Uh, during those months, especially like May, uh, when most people do their renovations, uh, you'll find that you've opened up the seed bed and those annual meadow grass plants can suddenly get the light, the air, um, and everything it needs to germinate those. So 
So a ryegrass plant is not the best one for uh, keeping out and, and keeping out of established lawn, keeping out rye, uh, annual meadow grass. Now, if we go to this one, I love this one. Um, this really gives you an indication of what stolons actually do. Um, this one, again, we've had a video, if you haven't seen it, about choosing the right grass species. This shows you, this is obviously grown in a hedge, believe it or not, so the lawn was somewhere over here. But it gives you an indication of how bent grass, and, and remember the, the clip we just showed you where the bent grass was uh, blocking out per annua. This is showing you that bent grass, this is one plant, and obviously it's a very poorly maintained plant because it was growing up a box hedge. But it, what it shows you is that this is how stolons grow. And the idea behind stolons and scarification or pruning as we call it, is that this next plant, when you scarify, if you scarify using a bladed machine, not a springbok rake, for example, um, you cut through that and then this plant becomes another plant like that. This plant becomes another plant like that. And they all become sort of parent plants. So you can see the leaf blades on here, quite a few even on a bit that's growing in a hedge. And then you can see the same here. So when you scarify through all of these stolons, cutting through with a blade, you regenerate lots and lots of plants. So when you scarify a bent grass lawn, you actually thicken it up. It's as simple as that. So when you start with a bent grass lawn, you're basically pruning it, and, and when you're thickening it up all the time, especially if you can actually time it well as well, you don't need to worry about annual meadow grass at all. Um, if it is, it will be there in a very small amount, and it probably won't be in a, much of an annual form. It will be more like a perennial form, um, perhaps, as well, because it just doesn't get the competition. Bent grass gives you competition. Rye grass, as you can see, will not give you competition at all. Um, and this, this is the same as on our front lawn uh, that you've seen in some of the other videos. This can be, and this is the reason why this is used on golf courses, because if you prune it, it gets thicker. It's incredibly simple technology. Um, we think it's hard to maintain, um, but that's not true at all. Um, in fact, we'll have a little look at our bent grass lawn out the front in a moment, just um, to keep people informed of what it's looking like. Um, but we can go into that and you will not see many annual meadow grass plants at all. You'll certainly only ever see them in a perennial form if they are there indeed. Uh, they're very difficult to get into. So when you have a combination of these two grasses together, You've got density. We call it, you know, a lot of people would worry about the thatch levels. But again, thatch levels comes down to soil improvement. If you improve your soils, this will get degraded by the soils. If you've got poor soils, uh, you'll have a very thatchy lawn. So when you do, when you have lots of people showing that they've scarified a lawn and tons of material come out, it's not necessarily that your lawn is incredibly bad. It means your soils are not alive. They're not doing the job that nature does. And nature will degrade that thatch quite simply on its own. So the more, more you nurture that soil with the use of things like true grass, which are soil conditioners and feeds combined, um, they will start doing work for you. So combined with many, many different aspects, this is one of the best starting points you will ever get in combating annual meadow grass. So one of the questions we received on Facebook, there was, there was hundreds to be honest. Um, some came through different, um, often come through different channels as well. But the, one of the interesting questions, and, and I've seen a few uh, YouTubers, whatever you want to call them, uh, advising on watering. Watering a lawn is a, is a good idea for annual meadow grass control. And that's, that's quite interesting because probably that's about the worst advice you could ever get. Um, as we saw with some of the uh, shots of annual meadow grass, the uh, plant is an opportunist, but it's also very, very dominant, uh, but it has a very shallow root system. And irrigating your lawn, especially during renovation, is gonna help 
and your meadow grass plants germinate exactly the same as your other plants. Um, it may germinate a little bit slower. All grass species germinate at different speeds, as you as you possibly may know. Bent grass is a is a is one for the experts. Fescue is a little bit easier. Uh, rye grass you could germinate that throwing it on the ground. It's really not that difficult. It's an incredibly simple grass to germinate. So they grow at varying speeds. So when, when people say, well, I just germinated grass in, in seven days or four days, you know, I think I germinated rye once in perfect conditions in 30 hours. It's really not difficult. But with your irrigating grass seed, during the renovations, during May and June time, you're going to be adding to the problem. Um, once you've got annual meadow grass, uh, that's, that's a slightly different proposition. Uh, because then you've got to look at ways to perhaps uh, impede that grass from, from getting stronger. A lot of people will put up with it, and, and I'm one of those as well, because it can be uh, a grass species that can look quite pretty in your lawn. If managed, if, if mown well, it can look perfectly good. But a lot of people don't understand the difference between an annual plant and a perennial. Lots of people see the annual plants, being like a big bunch of ugly bananas. And we'll, we'll have a look at one of those in a moment. Um, but when it's perennial, when it turns to a perennial, it evolves to a perennial, it's much darker green. Most people probably wouldn't even know that they've got it into their lawn. Um, and it's something that, that a lot of lawns in this country will have and will put up with without even knowing about it. So irrigating your lawn, um, you need to be very, very careful, as I say, especially when you're trying to germinate grass seed because you will just help the annual meadow grass as much as the other grass seed in it. So here we are on what we would describe as a rye fescue lawn that was laid um, by a garden designer. And what you're looking at is um, the annual plant of annual meadow grass. You can see it's a lot paler in color uh, you can see a few seed heads as well, but uh, if you just come slightly north of that over here, I don't know whether this will pick up on the camera where my finger is here. This is also annual meadow grass, but it's evolving into a perennial form. You see the big difference in color there. Uh, there's quite a bit, you know, it's it's a lot more visible, but this this is annual meadow grass but it's evolving into a more perennial form. Now what you can see with this uh, ryegrass lawn is that um, this was cut a couple of days ago and uh, as you can see from in here, the grass is already doing what it does. Ryegrass grows incredibly quickly, um, so two days growth and then this needs a cut again. Um, and there's obviously, when you get grass like this during the season, uh, you know, which might be from, from May till October, there's enough plant density to stop annual meadow grass germinating. However, this annual meadow grass is coming during the time that this lawn doesn't grow vertically very well. Uh, and that's from about sort of October, November time, right the way through to, to next spring. And that's where these seed heads have a chance to germinate into a new a new uh, annual meadow grass plant. So it's not so much about ryegrass being a very bad grass during the summer, it's about it being a very poor grass during the winter and that's where annual meadow grass comes in. So here we are on a ryegrass lawn, ryegrass fescue lawn. Uh, we've shown this in some of the other videos and this basically has nothing done to it as well. Um, you've got to remember, not everybody is an enthusiast on lawns. Some people just want this. They just want grass. If it's got a few weeds in, great. But this is um, what we're trying to show, is what will happen to a ryegrass fescue lawn if constructed without too much knowledge. I think it's probably the polite way of putting it. So as we just pointed out, you know, we've got a lawn here. This is um, Luna, by the way. Um, we've got a lawn here, which dogs do urinate on. They do um, other stuff on as well, uh, but it doesn't get fed. But this lawn was cut two days ago. Um, 
and, and it, in places it's three to four inches long. Uh, so all that energy is sort of growing straight up towards the sun, which is, you know, what grass does, or certainly what this grass does, and that goes into the compost. And because the plant's not giving you any density, it's not really giving you any benefit, it's just giving you a huge compost bin. Um, so when you do have a lawn like this and you just want to look after it, some of the things that you can do will be quite important and that, that, that's basically trying to uh, improve the, the lawn structure um, with a, a goal to encroach different grass species. Now we pointed out once before under here where it's a little bit drier for example that the fescue grasses are starting to dominate over the rye grasses. The rye grass has almost died off because rye grass loves moisture, it loves uh, wet lawns as this one is in the winter, uh, but fescue is a drought tolerant so that's why it's surviving over there. And, and obviously changing your grass species and modifying your grass species and encouraging uh, finer, denser plants in your lawn is a way of combating annual meadow grass from coming in. But as I say, this one here, uh, you can see some of the weak areas in here which were from the winter time. This is very, very muddy and open. That's when the, uh, the actual seed is going to start to germinate. It might not start to pop until March or April, but the damage is done during the winter, not during the summer. You're just exasperating it a little bit when you start to irrigate. And one of the other things as well is people often, and this is another question that we had along the similar lines, is can we starve annual meadow grass out? And of course, if you look at this lawn, this has not been fed, um, in, in, as far as I know, in two or three years. Um, so we've got a grass that's using the rainfall uh, and the little bit of nitrogen in the rainfall and it's continuing to grow. We've obviously got a little bit of dog, dog uh, urine as well, which is adding a little bit of growth in some of these dark patches as well. But it's, it's basically showing us that if we don't feed a lawn, is it gonna make any difference to annual meadow grass? Now, you know, we, I, I've ran one of the best golf courses in, in the world, and we've tried to starve annual meadow grass out. But if you starve annual meadow grass, you also then starve uh, the, the competition as well. It's a very fine balance if you're looking at rolling a ball perhaps, you know, at um, 14 on the stint meter on a golf course or something as opposed to a domestic lawn. So can you starve a lawn? Absolutely not. You can make an attempt, but generally speaking, your lawn will look a little bit awful. Um, but it, again, it's not looking at the problem of how did it germinate in my lawn in the first place. Here, it was purely down to the fact that because this is a very wet lawn, because we've contained it in four different sides, um, we're relying on the soil itself being really free draining. And this was obviously put in by a garden designer who didn't test their soil beforehand because this isn't free draining at all. Uh, and, and that would be for most garden design, if I'm honest. So, so the grass species here are telling us that this is a wet lawn. Um, it's therefore telling us that because of that wetness for four or five months, the grass will thin out and the opportunity for annual meadow grass to come in uh, will happen. And without feed, it's still in here and it will continue to come in as well until we perhaps corrected the drainage on here and improve the grass species to give us a little bit more um, probability of keeping annual meadow grass out. So one of the other questions we, we had, which again, there, there was hundreds and we'll only catch on a few because I'm sure you'd be bored of me by now. Um, but is the, is the question about uh, verticutting and collecting the clippings. Now I watched a video the other day on YouTube with uh, a well-known YouTuber in the lawn care world who verticut or, or lightly scarified his lawn uh, that was infested uh, with annual meadow grass, if I'm honest, and um, probably just spread millions and millions of little seeds around, um, whether you mow it afterwards or not. Uh, it's one of the worst things you could actually do. Um, in fact, what you'll probably do is turn it into a power lawn a lot, lot quicker, unless you do something about it. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very sort of interesting one, but 
we we have um, I, I suppose a company that sell fantastic mowers if I'm honest and they often frequently talk about uh, annual meadow grass control can they control it is verti cutting a thing well verti cutting is it was was designed for golf greens let's not forget it wasn't designed for somebody on a lawn it's basically stealing an idea from the golf industry and that was with the golf industry a number of years ago before we had some some wonderful chemicals that stopped the seeding of the annual meadow grass so if they had a golf green or 20 golf greens or whatever it may be uh, during the period of may and june the seed heads would pop up and nobody would have anything to do about it so the ball bounce the ball roll on your golf green was very bobbly and awful uh, so the idea of of, of verticutting was was drawn upon the same ideology of um of scarification for example uh, and they even had uh, another machine which we call a groomer uh, it's probably not allowed to be called that nowadays uh, for obvious reasons but it was a turf groomer um, and the difference between all three of them was the uh, the extent or damage uh, that you would do to the turf so the depth of verticutting the depth of scarifying and the depth of grooming uh, when you scarify a lawn or, or golf green it dries the surface out requires a lot of water you know, if you've got a ball roll surface, for example, you don't really want to be doing that during the period of when the uh, seed heads are popping up. So verti-cutting your lawn um, is, is something that people talk about. Just because people talk about it doesn't mean it's necessarily the thing that you need to do. Verti-cutting is still a pruning technique uh, used on very fine turf, bent grass uh, turf. It's utilized a little bit nowadays to keep the canopy open and free of air i suppose on professional sports and obviously it works for that on your domestic lawn probably not a lot of reason but we're a we're a world of followers and if somebody uh, somebody says it's good it must be uh, but if you don't need to do it and if you're trying to do it to to keep annual meadow grass control uh, or keep annual meadow grass out of your lawn you're wasting your time. It's already there. You'll probably drop as many seed heads as you collect. And um, all it's waiting for is an opportunity to germinate, of which on a ryegrass lawn it will get. And it'll get during that winter period. That's when it will happen. Um, so can it be verti cut out? Absolutely. It, it, it can take plants out, but the existing plant is still going to be there. You're probably going to exasperate the problem by putting more seed heads in. Um, and the other question sort of revolved around that was whether I can mow or should I mow with the box on uh, during that period of seeding? Absolutely. If you want to control it, you've got to do everything feasible. You certainly don't want to do, as I saw in that YouTube video, somebody having the box off and spreading them all around. That's, that's probably the worst advice I think I've ever seen. Um, for annual meadow grass control, you've got to keep uh, mowing it you've got to keep mowing it well consistently removing as many seed heads as you possibly can um, but it, it is control the plants already there the damage is done so can it help it can help a little bit but it's a very small amount so when it comes to annual meadow grass control perennial meadow grass control is there anything I can do at all? Well, of course, if you if you want to be obsessive about it and uh, walk out and pick 10 pieces out of your lawn every single uh, week, then there's nothing stopping you. Uh, is there anything I can do uh, to keep it under control? Absolutely. Sensible watering, sensible feeding, sensible lawn mowing and sensible verticutting will all help in controlling it but it will not stop you from actually getting it. What we hopefully have taught you is that establishing the right type of grass in your lawn in the first place is the best way of controlling it eventually. Because the grass again, as we showed with the video um, from February onwards, we showed that the grass is doing all the work. We're not actually doing any work at all. And grass will compete with each other. Um, so whether you've got a fescue dominant lawn or whether you've got a bent grass dominant lawn, 
um, those will those two in particular as you saw with the samples will help compete with uh, annual meadow grass from from even the stab lineage itself when it comes to uh, perennial rye you will struggle if you dominate with perennial rye you will give every single year annual meadow grass a chance to come in um, with another th another point that um, I read about the other day was somebody somebody said oh the power's blowing in from my field uh, next door which which is absolutely poppycock um, power will be blowing in from everywhere you'll bring it in on every single thing birds will bring it in your mower will have it if your you know, your scarify will have it you may not see it but there's there's absolutely no reason if you went out into that field over there you probably don't actually have a lot of annual meadow grass uh, in it uh, so when when you hear stories that that's the reason it's not it's down to poor lawn maintenance quite simply um, what you can see here this is how obsessed i am with um, annual meadow grass control now i can pick lawn uh, annual meadow grass species out on this lawn um, but very very little even in the mowed areas uh, there's literally nothing there at all because again it's bent grass the grass is doing all the work for me I'm not making any effort um, this doesn't even get fed it just gets mowed once a week if that so um, I've got millions of seed heads down here Some beautiful fescue seed heads there's bits of bent grass seeding there's bits of Yorkshire fog there's bits of absolutely everything seeding in here um, and will it come into my lawn probably if it gets a chance so if you want my honest opinion um, after 42 years in this industry it's a plant that you've got to live with it's a plant that you can give an opportunity uh, to, to come into your lawn or you can give it an opportunity uh, for the grass species that you want dominant in your lawn to fight against it uh, but truthfully there's not any chemicals there probably never will be any chemicals uh, it comes down to sensible lawn management it comes down to the timing of your scarification it comes down to the timing of your overseeding um, and it comes down to choosing the right grass that's going to help you compete with it so uh, I'm a big fan of annual meadow grass um, but as, as I pointed out earlier this is the type of uh, this is one of my lawns. It's not. Um, this is just a nice meadow. It's great for birds, insects, wildlife. Um, it's not what you'd call a lawn, but obviously some people do. Um, so anyway, if you have liked the video, it's a long one today, but power annual is a tricky subject. But do like and subscribe. Um, send us your comments again. Uh, it'd be great to hear from you. And uh, if you've got any more questions, like I say, get over to the Facebook group. Um, you know have a look at our other social media channels as well um, we're here to help we're here with the right advice and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next video so uh, take care and see you soon